Hey guys, how's it going? Ghosty Rich here today with a tutorial on how to back up a hard drive just in case one of yours is dying. This way, if it starts to die, you can quickly back it up and save the information that's on it. Now, first thing I was going to go through is the easiest way to back them up nowadays is you can either try and buy some cloud storage, which can be very expensive, or if you want to, you can just buy these uh, one to two terabyte hard drives that plug right into the PC. They're still around 50, 60 bucks, but they make it really easy to back up your drive that's dying. Now, if you're having problems reading the drive that's currently dying, the best way to actually uh, see it is you can also download a program called Ubuntu or Linux. Um, if you want to learn more about downloading those programs, you can always jump on YouTube, of course, and search how to download Linux or uh, Ubuntu, and it will show you how to download it to either a USB stick or burn it to a CD. And basically, it's just a operating system that will run off a disk or a USB stick. And a lot of times when drives are can't be seen by Windows, I've plugged in uh, the USB stick with Linux on it or Ubuntu and be able to see it. It's a really good thing just in case. Also, if your uh, Windows crashes and you don't have a Windows CD and you can't get it back up because it's too corrupted, you can always try and go in with Ubuntu or Linux and get your old files. Um, it's really actually easy once you go in all you're gonna do is you're gonna be plugging in a USB stick with Linux on it and it'll allow you to see a lot of times the uh, it'll allow you to get into a dead operating system and recover your files that you need um, so I would highly suggest picking up for that case too um, a one to two terabyte hard drive so that way you can back up the stuff that matters to you you know photos and all that other stuff so you could there's one way you can do it. You can do that or you can get one of those, uh, now you can get flash drives. If you're only saving your pictures, you don't care about any other things on there, a lot of times you can just pick up a 64 gig stick that's about this big. Still, it's going to cost you about 30 bucks. So in the long run, I still suggest picking up the portable hard drive because for an extra 30 bucks, uh, double the price, but you get a terabyte instead of a couple gigabytes or 64 gigs and you'll probably end up using this for a lot more things like movies and everything else whatever you want to back up it's perfect so that being said um, with me what I'm gonna be doing today if I go to computer here as you can see I'm running on like zero space I need to uh, I need space this is my solid-state drive which if you're uh, going to be replacing your uh, main operating system drive I highly suggest you pick up a solid state drive and a media drive meaning say like I've got a Seagate one here I'm going to be putting in and this Seagate one is a 64 megabyte cache and it's going to be 3000 gigs so 3 terabytes and it's uh yeah, 70, I think it's 7200 RPM. But yeah, I picked that up yesterday. And that's going to be going in to replace this media drive. So I'm going to be copy and pasting everything from here um, onto my passport. Now, keep in mind, you can't do this with games. You can only do that, like the copy and paste, with um, uh, like music and stuff like that. If you start doing it with games, uh, your desktop launch icons won't be working and it can cause a lot of headache the best thing usually to do is uh, just reinstall onto the new drive that would be your one that would give you the less headache you could try copy and pasting might work with some games but you still have to be careful because certain shortcuts and stuff that you have around your computer won't be headed there it'll be trying to find it so from that being said first thing you want to do is back up your hard drive and as you can see I have way more gigs on this than I do on this drive so I can actually back everything up onto here the other thing I might do is I might just actually leave this in here as a buffer drive and then I might throw in my third hard drive uh, and just put it right here 
Uh, so yeah, that's basically how easy it is. If you're interested in seeing um, how to put the new hard drive in and how easy it is to put a new hard drive in, stay tuned for the next section. Hey guys, so the next part that you're going to need to do is if you look on the side, you'll see all your connections. What you want to do is unplug them, but what I suggest you do is take a picture first, so that way you know where every single USB went. Otherwise, when you turn the PC back on, if it's in a different hole, it'll have to try and search for the device and then match the drivers to it sometimes. The best thing to do is just to take a picture so you can put everything right back in the right hole. Um, especially if you're not really good and you didn't set up your computer that way you know if you're running a graphics card sometimes there's an onboard and if you plug it into the onboard instead of your graphics card then you're gonna have a lot worse uh, picture and video quality and gaming quality so um, if you see the card you're probably gonna be plugging into there alright so just make sure you get that and everything else so, also while you're in here, you might want to actually uh, blow out your system or clean it with a vacuum. So, the next thing you're going to want to do is if you have a Phillips screwdriver, uh, usually it's a Phillips, you just undo these. Mine are just finger tightened because I have the thumb screws. And then you just take this off. A lot of times, if you've got a gaming PC or something, you're going to have a fan right there. Let's see what we got right here. And as you can see, I have my old hard drive right there with the two little side pieces on there. I'm going to have to swap that drive out. Um, if you don't have a newer style case like this with the quick disconnects, what you will have is uh, Phillips screws. So what you'll do is you'll just slide the drive in. If I pull it out of this casing here. And you'll see, well, actually, if you take your hard drive, you look on the side, you're going to see the little small holes in there. Um, make sure you use only computer screws. Don't try and jam some other random screw in there because some of them might be a little bit deeper. And you don't want it to, one, strip out the uh, threads. And two, you don't want it to strip out the uh, into the hard drive because if, if you're ramming on it and it self taps into the hard drive you're gonna run into a lot of problems really quickly as you can see I have my solid state drive right here and uh, if you're putting in a solid state drive all you gotta do is put some double sided sticky tape on it if you want to or some velcro and velcro it to a surface they don't get very hot and you don't really need to bolt them because there I know there's a drive mounting kit for them but they're bloody expensive and totally unneeded you can double-sided sticky these things anywhere it's and if you're like oh well isn't it supposed to be you know this way up or this way down it's just like a we'll say an iPhone or your Android device those use solid-state drives it doesn't matter which way you mount it it's like otherwise holding your phone in a certain position would be very bad for your cell phone because a lot of them use solid-state stuff in there so once again just find a good place that you like it and put it there and you're all good okay so, if you're at this point, what you're going to want to do is if your hard drive came with quick disconnects, you're going to put one on each side, usually pretty easy. Let's see if I can, this is my old drive, but yeah. As you can see, it's just with mine, there's no even bolts. It's just two black pieces that are going to line up with two pins. You grab them and you slide it in and it locks in. All right. And yeah, that's basically it. Next thing you want to do is you're going to have to give your hard drive power like so. Power and then SATA. And uh, the SATA cord will go down and in. Uh, if you have a motherboard, you might want to read up on your connections. There will be some connections that give you um, 3.0. And I think, yeah, and then some of them will give you 6.0. So if your hard drive requires... Uh, say to 6.0 you might need to plug that in instead of the 3.0 just a tip and uh, yeah like I said if you go in here and everything is completely covered in dust it's a good opportunity to start sucking stuff out just make sure if you're sucking stuff out that you put your fingers in the way of the fans as you're sucking it out cuz if not the fans will spin really fast and they can cause a whole lot of damage or damage the bearings on the inside and if it damages the bearing on the inside then you get that whiny fan or you just get that fan that jumps or you could do some other stuff so 
yeah, just make sure that you don't let the uh, fan start spinning like crazy. Otherwise, you could run into problems. But yeah, okay. So stay tuned for the uh, next section, and I'll show you everything mounted in. All right, guys, so one last thing for you, too, is make sure when you're mounting this thing that you don't put it right next to another drive. Like, see how these drives are pretty close? That's fine, but what you don't want to do is mount a hard drive that close. The reason why is these get pretty hot, and sometimes they have breather holes on them. If you look around, I don't quite see one for this, but still, if it gets hot, you want room for the heat to escape since it's this style is not a solid state. There's still spinning moving parts, so they do get quite warm. Uh, it's always a good idea to make sure you leave space. So, as you can see, I've got this pocket right here. It's going to be going in the center of that pocket, so that way um, it's got enough cooling on each side. All right? So, just a quick tip for you. And uh, yeah, if you wanted to see the rails when they're out, all I, like I said, is you push the pins into the screw holes and it uh, locks them in. And then we're just going to slide our, dri our drive in the track if th that's how you have it for the quick disconnect drives. If you have the other style where it's bolt on, like I said, you just bolt it in and be careful when you're bolting it in. Okay. Hey guys, how's it going? So the last part you're going to have to do is you're going to go to computer and if you look right here you're going to notice that I've got this drive showing right here but yours might not be showing and the reason why is it's probably not allocated so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get it so the computer reads your drive so what you're going to do is click start here and then you're going to go to computer right click and if you go to sorry give me one sec here manage and once you go here you'll see disk manager if we click here you can see I have some unallocated space and the reason why is since I bought a three terabyte not a two terabyte and I'm running home edition it won't let me allocate the 746 gigs extra right here because it's saying hey that's a three terabyte and we're only allowing you to use two gigs of it because I've only got home edition not pro edition if I get pro then I can allocate that now this allows you to do it um, you can allocate space now the way that I actually like to do it is I actually use mini tools or mini tool partition wizard it's easy if you go online you can download it it's super easy as soon as you download it um, once again it's mini tool partition wizard all you're gonna do is you can either try and recover data from a disk if you had no luck with the other attempts um, it only allow you to recover a gig worth of data which like I said your best bet is just to use Ubuntu or um, Linux so as you can see here we have the mini tool partition wizard we click here now I've already partitioned so I can't really show you that part but if you click here and you double click it's gonna come up with an amount and it'll show a size Let's see if I can sort of bring it. Uh, no, it's not going to let me. But yeah, if you click on here, you'll click on the drive because you'll see it here. And then you'll press the create button, which if you click on it, it'll pop up with. So when you click uh, create, uh, it's going to let you choose a name and a drive letter. As you can see, I did Z and then I put media. So that's all you're going to do. And after you do that, uh, allocate the space you want and if you want to have more than one drive like maybe you want to make one for pictures one for videos and stuff you can do that and then just use up the space on the drive but yeah that's basically what you're gonna be doing just do that and um, from there you will be able to see your drive and here's the thing if you want to copy and paste like here I'll show you um, right now I have uh, currently the drive Jimmy rig down there my old drive which I'll be removing it's just so small and it's out of date and everything. Um, let's click right here. Uh, computer. So you can copy all this and then paste it right here. And uh, if you do that, including games and stuff, what you can do afterwards is if you call it the exact same thing and then for the drive letter, if you what you can do is after you move everything from there to here you unplug this you can change this drive letter to an M uh, like not an M but your previous drives letter so that way all your shortcuts will work on the 
desktop. It's just got to be exactly how it is here. So it's got to be a mirror image. So all you're going to do is copy, press cut, go in here, press paste. And then after you've done that, you're going to uh, switch the drive letter. Now, let's see if I can do it right from here. Properties. Well, the best way to do it actually is through the disk manager. I think that's right here. And we're just going to go back to computer, manager drives, disk manager, change drive letter and paths. And then you can change that to an M or well, whatever drive. If that used to be your D drive, you can make it a D drive again. All right. So that's what you're going to have to do. I hope this tutorial helped you out. Please, if you have any questions, post in the comment section below. And um, other than that, if you found the video interesting, please like the video. And if you like multiple videos of my content, be sure to subscribe. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.